Axway's API Builder is a framework for building optimized APIs or microservices and a runtime service for hosting them in a scalable fashion. You can find out about uh, Axway's API Builder at the online documentation, uh, which I'm showing here in the browser, and there's lots of guides about API Builder, including a getting started guide. And when you're building uh, microservices or optimized APIs, you're typically connecting to a backend data source such as Salesforce or Oracle Database. In this example, I'm going to connect to a local instance of MySQL, and I'm going to connect to uh, the Salesforce um, service. In order to do that, I need connectors, and I'll go to the Axway Marketplace, click on the Connectors button, and you can see the out-of-the-box connectors that are available. And if I click on one of these connectors, I can um, download it or inst and find instructions for how to install it. Now, when you're building a, an API builder project, you're working on the command line, you're running locally on your machine, you're going to develop the APIs with no code or low code, and then you're going to run it locally and debug your APIs locally on your machine, and then when you're ready to publish, you'll publish to the API runtime. So if I go over to Terminal, I'll use AppC New to build a new project. Select Arrow App, call it LB Demo API. You can see it created here on the desktop. And now that it's done, let me go into that folder. And what I need to do is install um, a Salesforce connector and a MySQL connector. So if I click on the uh, connector link and click download, it actually will bring me to the GitHub page, which actually has instructions for installing it. So I can just copy and paste this. And that's going to install the Salesforce connector into this project. And if I open the project folder, uh, and come under the conf folder, you'll see the Salesforce connector configuration file appear there in a second. There it is. And I need to install the MySQL connector. I have a shortcut for that. And now I'm installing the MySQL connector. So once these connectors are installed, now I have to go and configure them. So let me go to the MySQL connector. And I can see here, um, if I look at my MySQL database here, uh, you'll see it's running at localhost 3306. The database is called test. So uh, localhost 3306, database is called test. The only thing I'm missing here is the password. And I have a generate models from schema. This will create models for all my tables and views. And model autogen is set to false. I'll set that to true. That will auto generate the APIs based on the models. So I'm done with that configuration. The next thing I need to do is configure my Salesforce connector. And you can see it's slightly different configuration here. Um, I need the base URL for my Salesforce instance, my username, password, and token. I have a shortcut for that. So there's that information. And I'm going to come down here, tweak a couple of parameters. I don't want to bring all of the Salesforce objects. I don't want to convert them all to models or create models based on all the objects because there are so many. I want account, contact, and opportunity. And I also need a comma here. And I will auto-generate APIs based on the Salesforce account, contact, and opportunity models, just so we could see that feature um, in two places, both in the MySQL database and also in the Salesforce application. And I'm done. At this point, I've, I've created a new API Builder project. I've installed the MySQL and the Salesforce connectors, and now I can run the project. Okay, so my project is now running locally, and I can go into the API Builder console here at localhost 8080 slash console. So I'm going to bring that into a new tab in my browser. And this is my API Builder project, LB Demo API. 
I can see what connectors are being used in this project. There's the MySQL and the Salesforce connector. I can see the models that were created. So my uh, MySQL database had table one, table two, and it also had a view called regions. Uh, so I can see here a table one, a table two, and, and a regions model. And in fact, if we look at uh, table one, you could see it's got four columns, RID, region, actual, and forecast. So if I look at table one, I can see, uh, well, the primary key is not brought down as a, a separate field, but I have the region, actual, and forecast. Uh, I can also see the account, contact, and opportunity models. And if I look at account, you could see all of the data that's going to be brought down if I just call this API directly. So these are the models. Um, be because I did set um, model autogen, that will create APIs based on the models. So for example, table one, all these APIs are automatically created and documented. So if I want to see the find all, which will bring down all the rows, here's the documentation for that, uh, including the various different responses, what they mean, and I can actually execute it here in the browser. And here is all the data coming from my MySQL database. So I, without writing a single line of code, I actually created REST APIs to a MySQL database. And you can see that same data here. Um, northeast, southeast, west, central, and Canada for the regions, and northeast, southeast, west, central, and Canada. Uh, if I go to the account model and do a find all there, execute that, you'll see all of that uh, Salesforce account data and look at all that data that's coming down. We're going to optimize this um, in a future video, but you can see all that data. Uh, now, the other thing that's provided in this API documentation are curl commands, the titanium code that you can just copy and paste into your titanium app, the code for a node app, a uh, code for a jQuery web app. So all the code samples are there in order for you to call this API. Um, but let's say, you know, I'm done. At this point, what I can do, I can do two things. Uh, I can stop running this project and I can then publish. So I'm not going to do this, but if I publish this application, it will publish it to, I'm logged into the public cloud. Um, but then I can also generate a client-side SDK. So even though we provide the code samples, we also provide uh, client-side SDKs. And if I select our SDK, you can see we provide SDKs for Alloy, Android Java, jQuery for web, Node.js code, Objective-C or Titanium code. So in this example, we saw how we can create uh, an API builder application, install two connectors, configure them, and uh, run our project locally. We auto-generated models and the APIs based on those models, all without a single line of code. In future videos, we'll talk about how we can optimize those APIs um, and do various uh, um, aggregation uh, and data transformations. Mm -hmm.